The Elden Ring DLC was just shown off in a new trailer, and there was a lot to break down from new locations to new weapons and bosses, and just overall a lot to see. But at the same time as that trailer, there was an interview with Miyazaki himself, which contained maybe even more information than the trailer. I'm sure you've heard a lot about what was in this interview, but there was one part in specific that I wanted to talk about because this detail alone sets Shadow of the Erd Tree apart from any other DLC from Software has created. And let me tell you, we are in for a great time. But before we get into that, I just wanted to address something real quick that I've been seeing a lot of lately. And that is that so many people have been complaining that the DLC is too small. And I'm just like, wait, have these people forgotten? If you're one of these people, then let me just remind you, it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. Alright, so let's get into the meat of this video. We're going to take a look at previous Souls games DLCs, like in Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3. These DLCs have all been amazing content well worth the purchase, but they've all lacked one of the best experiences that their respective base games had, which is character progression. When Elden Ring's DLC comes out, you're going to have to play it on an endgame character, or at least close to it, in order to be strong enough to overcome all the challenges. It's designed this way on purpose, but as you probably know, by the time you get to endgame, you're not really leveling up your character that often, and when you do, it barely makes a difference. I mean, you could literally farm for an hour for like one extra point in damage. If we think back to the previous DLCs, this is how it's always been. You play through them and reach the end without much growth in your character at all. You could take the final boss of those DLCs and then swap them with the first one, and it would still be an even match. We obviously know that's not how the base game works, like, you couldn't just fight Melania right off the bat. I mean, unless you're some MLG god. Developing your character and progressing is, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the game. And it has been completely missing from the DLCs. Until now. That's right, baby. I'm talking about the new leveling system that Shadow of the Erd Tree will set in place. In the previously mentioned interview with Miyazaki, he was faced with this question. They asked, are there any new elements unique to the DLC? To which he responded, there's an element of leveling unique to the DLC. He then went on to say, think of the attack power system in Sekiro. Separate from the original level system, there's an attack power that is only enabled in the DLC areas. So there's gonna be a new leveling system that is only active within the bounds of the DLC areas. But because he said it'll be like Sekiro, I think it'll be helpful to go back and take a look at what that system was like for those who haven't played the game or simply don't remember. Sekiro is similar to the Souls games when it comes to bosses and combat, but one of the biggest differences lies in the fact that there aren't really any builds, at least not in the way you think of when talking about a Souls game. There's no strength or dexterity or any leveling up of stats to play a specific way. If it helps to think about it this way, the game basically just has one build, and progression is very linear. You go from level 1 to level 2 and so on. I don't even think there's a way to see how much damage you're actually doing. You kind of just upgrade, and that's it. And I'm not talking about upgrading your weapon. You just upgrade your attack power, which is sort of an abstract concept compared to the Souls games. So, the way you upgrade attack power is by using a boss memory, which is basically Sekiro's version of boss souls, or the remembrance items from Elden Ring. You kill a boss, and then you get to level up. It's very simple, but this meant that attack power was directly tied to eliminating the bosses in the game. And compare this to other Souls games like Elden Ring, you can just run off to some corner and farm runes till you completely outmatch the boss you were stuck on. So let's imagine this attack power system in Elden Ring's DLC for a moment. I'm gonna guess that attack power, or whatever it will be called in Elden Ring, will simply show up in the stat screen, assuming you're in the DLC areas. I could see it being tied to the bosses, like in Sekiro, but Miyazaki sort of already confirmed that this would not be the case. To quote him, So you can do something like exploring other areas before going back to challenge bosses that were too strong the first time, allowing you to more easily experience this even in the high level range. So putting all of this together, you enter the DLC already all beefed out from playing the rest of the base game, but your character progression doesn't stop there, baby. You get a new stat that, when upgraded, simply increases your overall damage output. And, in order to upgrade this new stat, you have to explore the world. 
In my opinion, this was an extremely well-made decision by the team at From Software and is going to add so much to the DLC. Imagine just roaming around the DLC areas, easily stomping on everything in your path until you reach a boss, at which point you then rinse and repeat till the next boss. That's pretty much how the DLCs have been in the past. Now, in Shadow of the Earth Tree, they can use this new attack power system to do a bunch of different things. For example, they can power lock certain areas to higher levels. They can reward you for exploring with something other than a new weapon, which might not even fit your build, and generally raise the stakes over the course of the new content. Now, I think that this more closely replicates the experience of the base game because there's definitely areas that you can't just go to right off the bat. You'll just get absolutely destroyed. Like, I think everyone's familiar with the experience of running on over to Kaelid and just getting absolutely chewed on by everything in that area. In previous DLCs, that's not really been the experience because everything has just been nice and evenly scaled all the way through the same exact way as the end game was scaled. So you just run through all of the smaller enemies pretty easily, and it just basically leaves only the boss moments as the highlight of the entire expansion. Like, think about Elden Ring as a whole. I'm sure the bosses are the highlights, but there's probably so many other moments just exploring the open world and finding small dungeons and all kinds of stuff that sticks out to you as well. And without this leveling system, a lot of that stuff would just kind of... Be forgettable because there would be nothing in place that requires you to progress to match that challenge. Alright, that's been it for this video. Let me know what you think about this new leveling system in the comments. Were you looking forward to a more simple experience with no concern for leveling up? Or are you happy that the system exists? Personally, I'm really happy that this will be in the game and I'm really looking forward to the moment when I walk up to Mesmer the Impaler and watch him whip out his thick shaft and then look me in the eye and say, it's Mesmin time. And then proceed to impale me like a fluffy little marshmallow over his flame campfire. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and share it with a friend. And as always, have a good one. <laughs>